YouTube family, what's going on, man? My name is Kieran Davis, owner and founder of Contagious Co., where we're focused on making self-love contagious for mental health awareness and suicide prevention. In this video, I want to talk about like the goals, the vision, the dream that we have here at Contagious Co. and how we want to help people and the problem that our, we're focused on solving here, right? So let's dive straight into it, man, without further ado. Now, this vid might get a little bit like emotional. Uh, it might be, you know, somewhat, it might resonate with a lot of you, but it also might kind of challenge you mentally, emotionally, like internally as well. And, um, you know, I mean, everything that I say here with no sort of disrespect, just straight warm, straight passion, compassion, and so forth, right? But let me say this. Nobody is coming to save you. Nobody's coming to save you. For me, growing up, I can guarantee you that I can probably count less than 10 people that actually can see me winning in life, that actually wanted to see me win in life, that actually would bet on me winning in life. No one had me, uh, you know, coming out on top, right? I, I grew up in poverty. I was one of those kids that you pretty much can tell was poor. I mean, if a, if, if a girl had a crush on me growing up, middle school or something like that, uh, <laughs> she probably could literally just from noticing me, she probably could literally see my like all of my clothes within like 10 days, right? She probably could notice that like, man, this boy ain't got it, right? So so if she did like me, she probably liked me just for who I was because it wasn't for what I had because I didn't have much and I was trying so hard to like Rubik's Cube my fits to try to like not be so noticeable, right? And um, I knew early on that like, People have like somewhat favorites, right? We all have like when you look around, you kind of see people and, and it's almost like we're programmed to view people as who's expected to win, who's expected to get the votes, who's expected to, to be number one. In my life, I've always liked the underdogs, even like some shows I watch on TV, right? I fall in love with the characters who come from the bottom and go through, face all adversity to come out on top because they're so determined for something bigger than themselves. I, I, it gets to a certain point in life where you understand that it's not just me going through this because you can look around at all the other people that society would call losers or society would not expect to amount to anything. And you can look at all these other people and tell, and then like you feel this sort of connection. Like, I really hope that you win in life because no one is, is counting on you winning. People are only looking at you to be and stay at the bottom forever. And this type of like, there's this book, The Four Agreements, and it talks about the different agreements we make with ourselves. And sometimes these agreements come from society. So when society starts to position you and label you as a quote unquote loser or somebody who's just never going to be on top because of your circumstances, because the family you come from, because of where you're from, right? It's very hard to not agree with that, you know? When you, it's so very hard not to agree and identify with this, right? And some people build personalities out of it. Some people will act out, they will do certain things, live a certain lifestyle because they think that this is the culture, but you never created this culture. You're just falling in line with whatever everybody else is telling you how to act and, what, and when the world is telling you how to be and what you think, what the world is expecting from you. The world is not expecting someone to come from food stamps and wick and, 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 you know, like when I tell y'all, my family used to go to like the Salvation Army and get like bread and donuts and things like that, that they would have some time. And when I tell you, like, it was so lit getting some donuts when you ain't got nothing in the crib type, you know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, my step pops used to come out with like bread and donuts and stuff like that, bro. When I tell you, like, it was like so lit, bro. And to go from that sort of reality to being able to try to create a reality for yourself that is breaking generational curses, that is bringing your family and your people out of poverty and out of the impoverished mindset. When I tell you that it's the mind that always traps you and where you are, and that's why I said in another video that your mind doesn't want to see you win. Your mind has already probably accepted who you are, where you're at in life, what you're going to amount to, 
how you how you exist in society. You probably look at other people and think that they're more valuable than you, that they're better than you, that they're smarter than you, that they're more attractive than you, that they're funnier than you, that they're going to live a more fulfilling life than you. But when I tell you that, no one is better than the next person. We are all born into different circumstances. We don't get to choose these circumstances. We don't get to choose our families or anything like that. But when I tell you that, there is a blessing in that destruction. There's a blessing in that chaos because you're learning valuable things and you're becoming an amazing human being because uh, I'm, one of my favorite artists growing up, uh, Lupe Fiasco, said, on the, he said, he said, the struggle is a sign that God loves you because on the low, being poor make you humble. I have a certain sort of humility, a certain sort of uh, empathy for people that I probably have never developed had I not gone through the things I, I went through growing up. So when I tell you that there's people who probably would never had to worry about anything and they could be horrible people, you know, based on somebody else's standards. Right. But to their people where they exist in their reality, they could be a great person and look at people who are less fortunate as just basically like garbage or something like that. Right. But when it comes to like mental health, mental health doesn't exist in the class. Mental health doesn't care about who's wealthy and who's less fortunate. It doesn't care about who's attractive and who believes to be unattractive. It doesn't care about what society thinks. Mental health, uh, you know, mental illness can grab anybody from anywhere and, you know, and, and, and give them a hard time and create challenges for them in their lives. Right. But I'm telling you guys this things because. When you come from nothing, right? When you come from poverty, it's easier to agree with the, the, the idea, right? That you won't amount to anything, that you won't become anything and just getting by. You, you adopt this survival mindset where you're just trying to get through every day and just get up tomorrow and just do it again, right? You were probably at a job you don't like. You're probably in a, you know, with friends that you're probably outgrown, but you, they're only people that understand where you come from. They, only, they understand what you've been through. Right. So it's like it comes down to are you happy? Are you happy? Do you feel loved? Do you love yourself? Right. Do you have people around you that believe in you, that can see you succeeding in life? that can see you outgrowing and becoming greater than what society may say that you can be, right? See, this resonates with me because I come from that. Besides me playing sports growing up and a few coaches who just took a liking towards me and believed in me that I could become something more, other than that, besides this, the immediate people all around, I don't think anybody was expecting me to win. I don't think anybody would expect me to be doing what I'm doing here today, to be seeing and, and, and achieving the things that I have done. Like I've come so very far in life. And to tell the truth, I still struggle every day with my mental health, with depression, with anxiety, with trauma, with, you know, so many different things. Right. And I'm trying every day to to just have a better control of that because I know that no one is coming to save me. No one is coming to save me, right? It's on me. Now, some of us, we might try to help and, and try to play the savior in, in, the, in people's lives around us, but this also causes a lot of like, you know, more stress and anxiety on our own personal well being. And I'm not saying don't play this role, but what I'm saying is, no one's coming to save you. So if you don't, you know, prioritize yourself and focus on your happiness, on loving yourself, on making sure that you're in situations and environments that you feel loved, then how are you going to play this role for other people when you are suffering, when you are, you know, running on empty, right? When nothing is pouring into you, you know? So a big part of me building this brand was to create something that pours into people, is to create something that reminds people that you are loved, that you matter, that you're important. In my mind, and like I said, and this is coming from, I'm still trying to outgrow that poverty mindset, that survival mindset. I'm still trying to outgrow a lot of these things. And we become so conditioned to this and people around us, they validate it, right? Because they have the same ailment that, that, that sort of you know, limited thinking. They have that same thing. So a lot of the times you're around people who are validating 
errors in your thinking, the validating issues, the thing that you need to work on and develop yourself to grow, to to actually break out of this this like jail that you're mentally in, that you're emotionally in, that you see yourself as this lower version of yourself and you're not that. You're not that. You're so much more, you know? The people around you validate this so it it it, it stops you from growing. And until you start to change your environment and start to work on how you think and how you view yourself and how you view the world that you exist in and what's the truth, how to how to really discern the truth. It's very hard to get out of that mindset. And I'm still struggling with that. Right. Because the very thing that has hurt me is also the very thing that I want to change and help and basically progress in life 